Welcome to Exploring Computing. Today's video is Computer Hardware, Part 2, A Closer Look at Processing. In this video, I'd like to take a close look at the processing component of our computers. As we saw in the last video, processing is one of the most important components of a computer. And as you may know, the most important processing component is the central processing unit or the CPU. But there's actually a bit more going on here, and so I wanted to highlight a few things. First of all, just so everyone's clear on what we're talking about, if, if you've got a computer, here are some of the common names for processors you might run into. If you've got an Intel processor, the most common Intel processors on consumer level computers are Core i3, Core i5, Core i7, and Core i9. If you've got a computer with an AMD processor, the common consumer level CPUs for them are Ryzen and Athlon. Now, one of the things about the CPU is the CPU tends to be a big bottleneck. As we've seen, all processing goes through the CPU. So in order to actually do anything, the CPU has to do all the work. Memory can remember things, but ultimately in order for our computer to actually act as a computing device, the CPU needs to execute. Now, there's a couple ways around this. One of them is we've started to get multi-core CPUs. Honestly, in some respects, this is less because we really need multiple cores and more because the electrical engineers have not been good at getting CPU speeds faster. For a long time, every year, CPUs got faster and faster and faster. And now we're starting to plateau out on the speed. So the electrical engineers are like, hey, we can't make the processor any faster, but would you like more processors? We can give you two cores, we can give you four cores, we can give you six cores, we can give you eight cores. And here's the thing about multi-core processors. You know, having a few cores is useful, but in terms of actually being able to take advantage of four or six or eight cores, a lot of it depends upon the type of work you're doing. So if you kind of think about it, like if I'm word processing, how am I going to take advantage of the multi-cores? And it turns out that this is actually an issue for programmers because programmers often don't know how to take advantage of the multiple cores in a multi-core processor. So, you know, ideally, if you want your application to run quickly and you know you're running on a computer that has multiple cores, you want your application to take advantage of as many cores as possible. And this has been kind of a problem. I think programmers are getting a bit better at it, but you know, I remember when the first video game consoles came out with multiple cores, this was a huge deal with the gaming programmers. Like, okay, I've got, you know, eight cores. How am I going to take advantage of these eight cores? I don't know what to do, how to split up the work that my program needs to do in order to do these eight cores. So if I've got Microsoft Word, what am I going to do with more than one core? It's, it's not always clear. There are, however, some applications that can definitely take advantage of multi-core processors. So some things that multi-core processors could be really good at. Um, if you're doing photo processing, you, you can basically split up the photo into different parts. And so you can have one core handle one part, another core handle another part, and a third core handle a third part. I, I've got a little bit of a demo here. So suppose we have a photograph of, um, this is my old dog, Molly the Flow Pup, so named because um, when I was a resident fellow in FLOMO for 12 years, um, for any grad students listening that aren't Stanford grads, uh, that's the equivalent of Ivy League housemaster. Um, Molly was my dog when I was in West Flo. So I uh, suppose we want to convert this image of her um, in color and we want to convert to black and white. So what I've got here is I've got a little demonstration of what this might look like with uh, a single core and then multiple cores. I've deliberately increased the size of the pixels for this demo so it's much clearer exactly what's going on. Okay, so our simulation is going to start off showing what would happen with one processor. And you can see that this is working. We're just going along and processing each of the pixels one at a time. Now, if we switch to two processors, you can see it's really easy to just split it up and say, hey, the top half of the picture, one processor, bottom half, second processor, we go up to four, again, way faster. And then finally, we're going to do eight. And you can see that this is really easy to just break this process down to take advantage of additional cores. 
because there's a clear way to divide up the work. And so if we're doing tasks like say weather simulations, again, really easy to figure out how to use multiple cores, just assign different cores to different parts of the country. And in fact, supercomputers have many, many cores, like literally tens of thousands of cores, and they're often used for simulation work for this very reason. In addition to multi-core processors, though, there's another way we can kind of get around the CPU bottleneck, and that is adding in specialized processors. And so modern computers generally have, in addition to their main central processing unit, which may be multi-core, they also have a graphics processing unit. Graphics processing units are probably best known by consumers for their ability to create 3D graphics for games. Here we've got a screenshot from Assassin's Creed Odyssey. But the GPU can be used for other purposes as well. Um, they can be used for photo or video editing. They can also be used for artificial intelligence and neural networks. Um, they've rather infamously been used for Bitcoin mining. In fact, the Bitcoin miners use of graphical processing units has really raised the prices and gamers are somewhat upset about this. Plus, it turns out the Bitcoin miners are using a lot of electricity and it's really bad for the environment. Anyway, I just wanted to give you an idea of what the different things that are going on with processes are.